We have Matt Page with us, the writer, the director, the star of Cop vs. Killer. Uh, hi, Matt. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? Good. I'm I'm Alan. This is uh, Dante helping me. Nice out. to meet you, Matt. Nice to meet you. I, I watch uh, I watch Film Threat. I watch your YouTube channel channel pretty regularly. Big fan, so I'm excited to be here. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, yeah. I I had actually reviewed your film, uh, Cop vs. Killer. Um, give us the. Quick I appreciate run. the review. Thank you. That was. Oh uh, no problem. Uh, yeah, give us a quick rundown on Cop vs. Killer. So the basic premise is uh, uh, it is uh, about a small town sheriff who is. Uh, attacked and left for dead by a killer, and then the killer takes um, the sheriff's car, his badge, and his gun, and begins terrorizing the town that the sheriff is supposed to protect. So it becomes a kind of cat and mouse game uh, of my character. I, I play the, the the sheriff in the movie, uh, trying to catch the killer while also being mistaken for the killer, because the news media just reports that hey, the sheriff is killing people. So as I'm trying to catch the killer, I also keep getting mistaken for the killer. So uh, uh, it's, an, it's a, something that I, I, I wrote a long time ago that I was finally able to, to, to make into a reality. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got uh, over 500 people watching the chat. If you have any questions for Matt, uh, post them in the chat. Uh, Matt will answer those. But uh, one of the things that, that uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of indie films and one genre that is slowly being uh, taken over by indie films is kind of the action thriller and, and yours falls into that. Um, what, you know, what was the impetus for making the film and uh, you know, what were your thoughts in terms of, uh, I'm, I'm going to assume you didn't have a lot of money to make the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, were, what were a lot of the considerations you made knowing your budget, but wanting also to make a, an effective thriller? Yeah, it was. A, it's a miracle. Now, I have so much. I've known for a long time how hard it is to make a movie. I've known people who have made movies. I've worked. I've acted in movies, but I have so much respect for anybody that completes an independent feature film because it is a miracle that any of them get finished. Because it was so challenging that um, each day when I went, we only shot. We shot the whole thing in ten days, and the schedule was so tight that we couldn't afford to lose a day. If we lost a day, we were not going to be able to film the movie. So so if at the end of every day, I would go back to the hotel room and I'd be there by myself alone in the hotel and I would just say to myself, nine more days, <laughs> eight more days, seven more days. Because I was like, there's no way. I don't know how we're going to pull this off. So we did pull it off. As far as the action thriller, um, I really, I'm a big fan of, um, the horror genre, the thriller genre, but also the action genre. And I love it when they come together. Um, it's such a unique kind of genre. And I grew up on movies like, I don't know, like like Death Warrant mm -hmm. with Jean-Claude Van Damme, you know, like these weird movies that kind of like, they had a martial arts star, but it's kind of a thriller, but it can't be too much of a horror because he's not really a horror guy. So like, I, I, I really like the blending of those genres of like finding a way to get a lot of action, but with like horror elements in the same movie. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and one thing about, I think one of the reasons why it's difficult for indie filmmakers to make thrillers is a uh, insurance and B safety. Um, oh yeah. 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 When we talked to the insurance company, uh, you know, we started talking about some of the action and stuff and they were like, you can't afford it. Don't even ask. <laughs> so, so we, we, you know, that we got them to agree to let us have like, you know, we were able to have like rubber guns on set and like a couple of airsoft pistols. Um, the, the stunts, you know, luckily um, the gentleman who plays the killer, Kevin Conan Bankins uh, is a mm -hmm. martial artist and a, a martial artist I've been training with for 15 years. So when it came time to do the fights, he and I knew each other. We knew how to train how to choreograph. Um, but, you know, as it happens with independent films, you know, the day we, each location, part of the design of the movie, the only reason we could get away with it was the structure of the film. If you see it is that my character goes to a location and meets uh, one of the characters from the film. And then later in the film, the killer goes back to the same location and, and wreaks havoc. Exactly. And so, from a production standpoint, I was like, Oh, well, cool. So we'll shoot my ha my scene in the morning and then we'll shoot the killer scene in the second half of the day. And that way that location is wrapped each day mm -hmm. and we get a lot of longevity out of it. When we did that with the, there's a, there's a diner location. We were so behind schedule that by the time we got to the fight, 
we had like an hour to shoot the whole fight. And it was the pivotal fight between the, the, my character and the killer. And people were telling me like, Oh, you're, you're going to have to cut it. You're going to have to cut the fight. You don't have enough time. And I was like, Oh, we can't cut the fight. So I went to the, the camera team who were exhausted. They were fantastic. Seth Fuller was our DP. And I said, here's the thing. Okay. Pick an angle. We're going to do the whole fight. Don't cut. Then just change the angle just a little bit. And then we're going to do the whole fight and then just change the angle a little bit. We did the fight like six times in a row and we just had them change the angle just a little bit each time. And I was like, whatever you get, I'll edit it. I'll figure it out. We'll, we'll, we'll cut it into a fight. And that's how we end up getting the fight of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what, how creative you can get when you're pushed, pushed uh, against the wall. But yeah, see, I was you, you put out the best cool. work when you do that, though, man. I, it's like absolutely that was what it gave me some of the most. Like, it gave me so much confidence when I in the editing room. I had a great editor, Daniel Dinning, and and when some of the scenes came together, I was remembering what a disaster the shooting day was and how many things fell apart. And yet, when the footage started to work, particularly on things we did on instinct, because we had no choice. And some of some of them came together. You know, it's a flawed movie. There are some things I wish were better than others, but there are some scenes that came together so well. And I thought, wow, it, how did we get away with that? I can't believe we got away <laughs> with, with that working, you know? All right. So so let me ask you a question for the uh, budding filmmaker. Uh, what were the challenges you faced uh, before before green lighting basically the project saying, OK, we're, we're doing this? You know, it was uh, it was really that the only reason the movie happened is because Somebody came to us and said that like they, they felt like they had, a, you know, a little bit of money, a very little bit of money. And actually, uh, one of the conditions was that Lou Ferrigno was going to play the killer. Um, and they had a connection to him. I had a meeting with Lou. He was very excited about the film. And then he had to drop out because he got offered a movie that could actually pay him real money. <laughs> um, and so... But we kept going along. We kind of just kept going along as if the movie was going to happen. And that was something I'd never done before. I was told that we had some money like New Year's Eve in 2021. So like December 31st, 2021, we were filming February 28th. Mm -hmm. So in like just a few weeks, like just deciding that the movie was going to happen, it kind of happened. And so the challenge was knowing that we absolutely couldn't fit the movie that I wrote into the budget that we had. So continuing to pare it down and pare it down. I gave the script to a producer friend of mine and said, you know, just give me your, give me your impression about like whether or not we can do this. Cause we were going to have to have SAG actors. I'm a SAG actor. Mm -hmm. And she called me an hour and a half later after she read it. And she said, are you out of your mind? I said, what? She said, do you know how many speaking roles you have in this film? And I said, 25 she said 52 <laughs> she said she said you have characters who walk in say one thing and are never seen again she's like you need to cut all of those <laughs> and so like our movie had an entire sheriff's department with like five deputies <laughs> oh, it suddenly became one deputy well one deputy got all of the dialogue because we couldn't afford to have people uh, in the movie. So it, uh, my, my daughter, the, the woman who plays my, the young lady who plays my daughter in the movie, initially she was eight years old. And then somebody was like, you know, if you have a kid on set, you have to have like a teacher and you can only work them a certain number of hours and everything. So immediately my daughter went from eight to 18. It was like, okay, problem solved. She's, she's a young adult problem solved. So we just kept having to figure out how to fit the movie that we could afford to shoot. Uh, into the the script that I wrote. So every day we would show up on set and I would read what I wrote and go, okay, so we can't do most of that. What can we do? Uh, what's the version of the movie that I wrote that we can shoot? And so it was just adapting the movie every single day, fitting it into what we had time for. All right. Well, we got some, uh, some questions from the chat. Uh, before we do, is that a million subscriber plaque behind you? The other side, yes. The other side. <laughs> what's uh, your channel? How did you get the... Uh, so the, my, my channel is called Enter the Dojo Show. I play a character known as Master Ken. Um, I wear a red uniform and a mustache. And uh, it's uh, something that I've been doing for uh, for over 10 years now. Um, it was actually, it, it was going to be my way into trying to 
make make films. I I I I got an idea to make a little a web series back when people were calling them web series, you know. Um, and uh, we made a little satirical martial arts show, and it kind of took off and became my job. So for the past ten years, longer than ten years, uh, that's been my job. Wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. We just re- we just got this wrong wrong side. I we we just got this like two months ago. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I just got. My th- my hundred thousand. Uh, <laughs> awesome! I, yeah, I've got my I, mine is so old, like you wouldn't recognize it. I like we my hundred thousand is like they don't. It doesn't look at all like they look now. It's like in a yeah. little cheap box. It's like a little round button. It's it's yeah. still I still love it. But yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations and yes, chat. We're better than you. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there we go. I just got us fired. Uh, I'm, I'm with the chat. I, I I don't have a plaque in the back of my uh on my walls or anything. So you'll get there. If, if you I'll, want I'll get one, there. you'll get there. If you want one, you'll get there. It's totally. I'm, I'm with the people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question from the nerd far away. Hail, Mister Page. Uh, how can I work toward getting involved in film while living in an area without a large or even independent studio? I'm currently at a local news station. In That's. Time, a- that's a really good question. I mean, what, when people ask me about that, you know, like one of the great things about the digital revolution, you know, it's been called is like equipment is cheaper than it's ever been. It's higher quality than it's ever been. It's accessible. Um, it's, it feels like there's movies being made everywhere. What, what, what I would say is to like, if you put yourself out there as willing to work for free or close to free, people will find you. Like, uh, but because if there's one thing independent movies need, they need free help or close to free help because it's so hard to make a movie, especially if we, we had several people who just offered to kind of just come and hang out and help us because they knew we were broken. They knew we needed help and, and we are grateful to every single one of them. Uh, so what I would say is like, look for people, you know, go to fil- like, look for film schools, look for ads online, find people who are making movies and just offer to be on set, offer to carry, uh, offer to go get lunch, offer to carry uh, equipment, offer to just whatever they need, just to be there and to be around them. Because the more of those people you're around, if you have a good experience and they have a good experience with you, they will bring you along on future productions. All right, great, good advice. Uh, Solomon Thornton, greetings sir Matt. Any advice for beginning filmmakers? Yeah, don't wait. Don't wait. I, I sat on the script for 10 years. I'm grateful. I, I I couldn't have made the version of the movie that we made without the help of the people who brought money to it. Uh, uh, most notably Triangle U Studios down in Truth or Consequences. Got to give them a shout out. And my wonderful girlfriend who did the producing on the film uh, and said, it'll be fun. And I was like, honey, it's not going to be. She had never produced a movie before. And I was like, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be really fulfilling and satisfying, but it's not going to be fun. Um, I would say that I could have, I set out to make this movie. In fact, the original draft was as a found footage, like a Blair Witch kind of thing. And I wrote it like that. Cause I was like, Oh, well that way, if it looks like shit, like it'll be part of the, it'll be part of the aesthetic of the film. It, it's, it's fine. And I should, I could have made a version of that film 10 years ago and I'm incredibly proud of the version that we did. I'm so glad we made it. I wish I was on my third or fourth or fifth movie by now because just completing the movie is the point. Mm-hmm. Go out, like pick something you can make, go make it, and then make another one. Like that's the that that's the way you have to do that. All right. Uh, Mark Gregory Gacosta. Hi, what's your inspiration for the movie? The premise sounds good. Honestly, at the time I was watching... Uh, a lot of YouTube. I was trying to figure out YouTube. You know, this was, I think I wrote this, uh, wrote the script after I created um, Enter the Dojo Show and Master Ken. And what I was fascinated with at the time was badge cam videos and dash cam videos of actual, you know, crazy things happening at traffic stops and things like that. And I had the thought at one point, I was like, you know, what's wild is that when I get pulled over, when I've been pulled over, I just assume that this person is who they say they are so that if somebody could pose as a police officer and be this psycho and I wouldn't know until it was too late that like, I don't know why I got that thought in my head, but I thought, well, that would be a scary premise if some dude just decided to pose as a cop 
and go around just terrorizing people. I thought, well, that's, you know, that's an interesting, and, you know, there have been a few movies like that, but I thought, well, what about a found footage approach to that? And so that was sort of the, the impetus of the original idea. And then when it came time to make the movie more recently, um, I reread the script after not having read it for a few years. And the first thing I threw out was a lot of the found footage stuff. Cause I thought, well, I, I need to, I, I need to like, kind of throw that away. That's going to be too hard to do. Let's just shoot it like a movie. And, you know, I feel like it was going to be too challenging to make that believable. All right. Uh, we have a super chat from Bush and Ryu Cat for $2. Matt, that's an awesome tea you got. Can you name them? I knew I knew as soon as I put, I even tried to name them by myself before I put this on. I should have looked it up. Okay. So I know that I know like Skeletor, Shredder, Cobra Commander. I know this guy <laughs> is from Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Uh, this is the bad guy from Thundercats and the bad guy from Transformers, whose name is, begins uh, with a D. Oh, why can't I? There's Megatron that? and Decepti. No, those are the Decepticons. The Decepticons, like the head of the Decepticons, is Devastator. Right? <laughs> it's, close <laughs> no, it is. it's close to that. It, it starts with a D. I, I, as soon as I put this on, I was like, somebody's going to ask. We'll me just call him the Big D. All right. The Big D. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm stumped. <laughs> uh, Black Star uh, 1069. Uh, how hard is it to do action choreography in indie films? Yeah, you know, we were, uh, like I said, I was really lucky that I, I've been training as a martial artist since I was uh, 16 years old. And I purposely, um, when I knew that Lou wasn't going to be able to do the movie, I knew who my next call was because I had kind of in the back of my mind thought that it, I might even have my buddy uh, Kevin be a body double or something because I didn't know if we were going to be able to 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 have time for Lou to do some of the action. And because we were both trained martial artists who knew each other, we were able to put quite a bit of that together very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if we had not known each other, I think it would have been a lot harder. Um, so that that is one thing that I would say we we were lucky that we knew each other. Um, and 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 again, a lot of the action got pared down. The fight that we shot was maybe half of what we had choreographed. We had to throw a lot of it out because we didn't have time um, in that there were several um, shootouts in the movie gun battles that were supposed to be like a, a whole SWAT team and like two other characters. And like we would show up and I'd be like, OK, well, we have three guns and three actors. So that's the new version of the shootout. I just have like keep paring it down and paring it down and fitting it into what we could uh, get away with. Yeah. Also, it would have been cool to have Lou Ferrigno as your doppelganger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, it, it's bizarre because he's like seven feet tall, but like it, <laughs> it, 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 it <laughs> would have been cool. And I got to give Lou credit. I will say initially the 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 version of the killer that was in the script that, that we had when Lou read it, the killer had almost no lines. And Lou uh, gave me some notes and said, you know, I had some ideas about like, I mean, I feel like the killer could be could have more of a backstory and be more interesting. And he gave me great notes. And I did a rewrite based on the thing, the conversation Lou and I had. And then he had to drop out, but Kevin uh, took it over and did a great job with the the notes that Lou gave us. So I got to, I, I always, every time I do talk about the movie, I got to give Lou a shout out for uh, giving me some great feedback on the script that I feel improved the film and a shout out to Kevin for, for giving a great performance as the killer. All right. Uh, where did you film Cop vs. Killer? We filmed in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Okay, good. Then this question applies. Uh, from A.D. Ellis, how has the indie scene in New Mexico been for filmmakers like yourself? Has it been growing since the Breaking Bad production wrapped up? Absolutely. Like, I graduated from film school uh, in 2005, and I was going to move to L.A., but um, then I got hired to do some promotional videos, and then I got I got a, a one line on um, In the Valley of Elah, the Paul Haggis movie. Um, who, the guy who directed Crash, and and that got me into SAG. And then I got a very small role. I, I'm in season one of Breaking Bad, just for a, just for a moment. Uh, uh, there's an episode where a security guard is locked in a porta potty. So mm -hmm. if anybody remembers that episode in season one, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a great one of the great things about Netflix um, 
uh, purchasing what was formerly ABQ Studios, now it's a Netflix studio, is that a lot of people can work and make a living on the bigger shows here. And then also, you know, when they have downtime and they have friends who are making films, they can be the crew on independent films. So Albuquerque continues to be a pretty great place to, to work in independent film. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Uh, we have a lot of questions. We can't get to them, but we can get to the important one uh, from Caveat Ties, a supporter. Uh, where can we see the movie? All right. Yeah, that is the most important question. You can see the movie on Amazon. You can see the movie on Tubi. Uh, it's on YouTube rentals. It's on Google Play. Um, so, yeah, just look it up. Uh, if you watch the movie, leave a review, uh, leave a leave a comment uh, that helps us, even if it's not, you know, if you can. You can give an honest review. It's okay. I know that it's not a perfect film. We tried really hard. There are some things I really like about the movie. There are some things that I would do differently. But um, yeah, anybody watching, if you're able to watch the movie, to leave us a review, to tell other people about the movie, um, I, I, I aspire to make more movies. And so the more this one gets out there, the better chance I have of doing that. Well, that's awesome. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, congratulations on the movie. Again, you got it made. That's That's the big thing. That is and, the uh, hardest thing. That is the hardest yeah. part, man. Yeah. And uh and it's available even on Tubi. I think that's where I saw it. So it's it's for free. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot and have a great day. Thanks for having me. See you, Matt.